shards does not change the number in calcium oxide. Mm -hmm. So these are the salts we just looked at. Now we're going to look at another type of salt that is a little more complex. It works off the same ideas as this, but it just looks a little more complex. So the next type of compound is called a ternary ionic compound. To use, to uh, write the formula or the name for these, you'll want to use the ion sheet that was provided in your lab manual. Okay? This ion sheet might be on the back of your periodic table. It might be at the back of your lab manual. This will always be provided on any test or quiz. This and this will always be provided. Okay? So this table here will help us with the names or formulas for ionic compounds that are called ternary. Now, ternary ionic compounds look a little bit different because you'll notice that the cation is the one in red. What's the cation of this first example? Sodium. Now, the anion is the whole entire CO3 thing. So the CO3 is clumped together as the anion. So I first look up Na, and Na's name is sodium. So the name for the first compound is going to be sodium. The name of the first compound So the first one is sodium, is the uh, cation, and then the CO3. To find out what the name of the CO3 is, you just need to look on this ion sheet. Okay, you can also use uh, all sorts of other reference tools to find out what it is, but this is what you'll be using on test or quizzes. So CO3, what name does CO3 have on this ion sheet? Fourth one down on the anion list. Carbonate. So the name of this compound is just sodium carbonate, and that's it. Okay, so all you need is that ion sheet, and you'll be able to name any ternary ionic compound. Okay, some people memorize it. You don't have to memorize it, obviously. If you always have it with you, you don't have to memorize it. The next one, NH4. If you look on the green ion sheet, NH4 is a positive cation. It has a specific name. What is its name? Ammonium. Ammonium. So it's the first one, I believe, ammonium. It is the only cation that will have more than one atom in it. It's the only cation that will have more than one element in it. So this is ammonium, and the CO3 is still what? Still carbonate. Okay. Now, in these compounds, the formula, the formula is determined by the charge. So the reason we have two sodiums in the first formula is because each sodium has a plus one charge. In this formula, we have how many ammoniums? We have two ammoniums. So sodium and ammonium are kind of like the same thing. Are they the same thing? No, but they both have a positive one charge. So you see this sodium, there's two sodiums for each carbonate. Here there's two ammoniums for each carbonate. The sodium and the ammonium are acting with a positive one charge the same way. So that's why this is called ammonium carbonate. Now, the next thing to look at, <coughs> carbonate, is if we take an ion like sulfur sulfide ion. Sulfur on the periodic table is located in group 6. So why does sulfur, has a neg why is sulfur here has a negative 2 charge? So the whole atom of sulfur, when it loses, when it gains 2 electrons, becomes a sulfur ion. Carbonate, CO3, 
the whole thing has gained two electrons. So it has a negative two charge. So the whole thing acts just like a sulfur. And what else is in the same column as sulfur? Oxygen. So oxygen, carbonate, or sulfur could each be placed in this same position and make a different salt. So could I have sodium oxide? Absolutely. How would we write the formula for sodium oxide? What is sodium symbol? Na? Na, 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 na. Sodium. And then oxygen. We know Na is plus one. Oxygen is minus two. So if we crisscross these, the two comes down here. The one goes down here. We cancel out the ones. Na2O is the formula for sodium oxide. That makes sense? Okay. So these are for ionic compounds called ternary ionic compounds. Okay. Now we're going to step one step further into what happens when you have a metal like iron or a transition metal. In this case here, you'll see it has a particular formula, Fe2SO43. To name this, we know Fe, on the periodic table, we look up Fe, and that stands for iron. So the first thing we can do is write down the cation name. Now, the next thing we need to do is look at the SO4. SO4, does anyone know what that happens to be? From the ion sheet? Sulfate. Very good. Sulfate. Sulfide is SO3. It has a slightly different formula. So it's iron sulfate. Now, we're almost done, but this one, since it has iron in it, iron is unique because iron could have different ions. Sulfur, I'm sorry, sulfate has a negative two charge, and there are three of them. So due to the sulfates, there are three sulfates, <coughs> we've got a negative six charge. What has to be the total charge on all the irons for it to cancel out the negative six? Positive six. How many irons do we have? Two. So we have two irons that need a positive six charge total. So two times what equals six? Three. Two times positive three. There are two types of iron. There's iron plus two and iron plus three. So it looks like iron plus three is the one that is in this formula. To distinguish that this is iron plus three, a chemist will just put the Roman numeral three next to the iron. So that is called iron three sulfate. That is its name. The three refers to the charge. Are there three irons in this formula? No. The three always refers to the charge. Let's say we had another compound where we had vanadium. And we had chlorine. And they came together to make vanadium chloride. Okay, vanadium on the periodic table is number 23. What symbol is vanadium? V. v. Now, what Roman numeral is this? Five, which happens to be a V, which is just a coincidence. If it's five, the charge on the vanadium is what? Positive five. Chloride is what charge? How many electrons does it want to gain to become like argon? One. So it wants to gain one more electron, which would be a negative one. Now, is this neutral? Plus five minus one? No. No. So we crisscross the numbers. We need a one here and a five here. This makes vanadium chloride BCl5. Erase the one. BCl5 would be the formula for vanadium five chloride. Okay. So these are special cases where an ion has two different options. This tends to happen when we have transition metals, 
or when we're dealing with metals like this down here, iron. So any of these over here tend to have more than one possible option. Okay. The ones you need to remember or know actually are all on your ion sheet. So if you're not sure, you look on your ion sheet and it will tell you the information on that. So let's look at this, copper one sulfate. What's the charge gonna be on copper one? One, and it will be positive or negative? Positive. Anytime you've got a Roman numeral, it's written first, it's a cation, it'll be positive. So copper one will be Cu plus one. Sulfate is still gonna be what? Still gonna be negative two. So, copper sulfate, You've got the copper is plus one, the sulfate is negative two. That's plus one, the sulfate is negative two. So how many coppers do we need to neutralize this? Two coppers. So that's the formula Cu2SO4 is copper one sulfate. What if we had copper two sulfate? Plus two minus two, is that the correct formula, CuSO4? Yep, so I write it out. If it doesn't need subscripts, that's copper two sulfate. The most common form of copper sulfate happens to be this one. Okay, this is the one we saw in our copper lab. However, this is why copper has so many different colors. This compound and this compound are different. This has more copper per sulfate than this does. So that's why they have different, one of the reasons why they have different chemical properties and colors. So this is how to write uh, ternary ionic compounds, either naming them or writing their formulas. <coughs> so these are the formulas here for these five compounds and names. Now the third class of compounds, yes sir? Um, why does uh, sulfate have a negative two charge if the uh, the reason that sulfate has a negative two charge is a question we will answer later when we talk about how the molecules come together. The reason it does is in order for it to have a multiple of eight valence electrons, it needs to gain two. So the easiest way to explain it without getting into too much detail of how it actually happens, which is a good question, is you've got S, you've got O, and you've got four of these. So sulfur has six valence electrons, oxygen also has six, but there are four of them. So if you add these up, that's 24 plus six, that equals 30. 30 is not a multiple of eight, but eight times four is 32. So if you added two more electrons, now that's a multiple of eight, it makes it stable. So you add two electrons to this, this is now stable where that would not be. So that's basically, electrons are added to make it more stable. Yeah, that's a basic way of showing that. We will get into a lot more details of that um, as we look at molecules and how they work. Yeah? Go back. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So we've got binary covalent where we always use the prefixes. We've got ionic, okay? And ionic, we don't use prefixes ever unless they're already in the name. So you don't wanna use prefixes intentionally on this for any reason, don't ever add a prefix. So we know that there are binary ionic, that's when it's got